Welcome back to the video lecture series for Introduction to the Art of Programming Using Scala. This video is going to be our last video where we are looking at the original Scala Actors Library. Uh, it's worth reiterating the fact that this library is being deprecated and it's being replaced with the, the ACA library. Uh, but A, it's what's in the book because of when it was written, and B, this library is actually a bit easier to use than, than ACA, at least for small projects, and so I think for, for teaching purposes it has some benefits. So in the last video, we were looking at receive, I guess the last two videos, we're looking at receive and passing messages back and forth. And in this video, we're going to talk about react. So we have this code here. We have our counting actor and we have a while loop around our receive. The problem with using receive in this library is that a call to receive uh, holds a thread. So when this actor starts, uh, it gets a thread. That thread uh, begins in the act method. And when we call receive here, if the actor doesn't have any messages, it will just sit there and block on that thread until it gets a message. Once it gets a message, the thread will wake up and, um, and check which case the, the message uh, works with. So the problem there is what if I have a system that needs to scale to tens, hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of actors? Well, your machine doesn't have 100,000 cores, and you really don't want to create 100,000 threads. You need to share a smaller number of threads among multiple actors, and the receive method isn't going to do that for you. So there's another method that's part of the API. Uh, receive is here. Right next to it is react. And just like receive, it takes a partial function. But there's a big difference here. Whereas the receive method takes a partial function and returns something, the react method takes a partial function and returns nothing. Now you might recall the nothing type is the sub is a subtype of everything in the Scala class hierarchy. And really the only way to give back nothing is to throw an exception. It turns out that the, re that the React method doesn't return. Okay? So when you call React, uh, anything that's after the call to React isn't going to be called. So to help illustrate this, let's put a print line in here. So each one of our actors will say that they are done with a message after they are have completed their receive. And if I run this, you can see all of these done with messages. And that's because after receive, this returned. So what if I change this to react? Now we run this again. Program terminated, but this isn't all that happy. Uh, got a string for the first message, got a number. That was our other actor, which is still using receive. Thing one printed 10, thing two printed nine. Nothing happened, okay? We didn't even get to this line. It, it did the, so thing one got the start counting. Uh, thing two got the countdown. But in both cases, after React was done, we just completely terminated. And neither one of them even got to this line of code. You'll also note that they didn't keep doing stuff. This whole while loop here doesn't work. The while loop isn't sufficient if you are using React because the control never returns. In the background, they're doing things with exceptions uh, to make it so that, that this doesn't return. But the advantage of React is it doesn't block on the thread. If there's no message, what it does is it literally hands the thread back to the actor system and lets the actor system use that thread on some other actor okay? so that lots of actors can share just a small number of threads if you're using React. But we somehow need to overcome this problem of the while loop. And so we go back to the API, and it turns out that just for the purposes of dealing with React, there's a method called loop and a method called loop while. So loop would have been like our while true. It's an infinite loop. You pass it a body, and it will execute it over and over again. And it is intended to be used in conjunction with React. Now we have a while loop, so I'm going to use the loop while construct. Just like a while loop, it takes a condition and a body. And so when we put this in the code, 
I can write loop while and has the same flag there. And now when I run it, you'll see that the things count down the way they were supposed to. Still note though, this did not print. Okay. Once again, the React does not return. There's, there's basically some magic going on in the, in the background that allows this to not return, but code to enter the loop while again. So anything you put after the React is still not going to happen. But you can make the React happen over and over again, either by using a loop or a loop while, despite the fact that it does not return on its own. So that's our coverage of the Scala.actor library. Um, it's worth noting that you know, unless you have a, a strong reason to, you probably react, uh, especially if you're going to have large numbers of react of, of actors. React is going to work better than than the loop. We'll come back in some future videos and continue looking at at the nature of actors. We'll look at the Scala concurrent package where they brought in Akka based futures, and then we'll also look at the Akka library for doing actors there.